Ahem. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey, it's Graham Breitenstein, the host of This Week with Drunk Astrology, the podcast. And you know, at the top of every new year, it can be so easy to fall into a mindset that's like, well, it's a new year. I guess I'll like do some goals. I don't know, a couple friends are doing dry January. Maybe I should do dry January. But you know what? That's not you, and that is most certainly not me. You know, we start 2024 with Mercury, the planet of our thinking mind, stationing direct. So that means the planet that rules the way our brain functions is stopped. So we experience some brain fog, a lack of clarity. We might be a little hungry for change, a little hungry to set some goals, but we're not functioning at our full potential. That's okay, because your astrologer here has created a free resource for you to clear through your mental muck. I'm calling it the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, and it is absolutely free, 0.00. Free 99. This thing is full of science backed prompts around goal setting and astrological insights because the timing of setting your goals is just as important. And that's exactly what astrology teaches us. So, to get it, you're going to go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. And in less than a minute, you're going to download your PDF and you're going to start getting to work. And here's what's cool. In 2024 and for the next 20 years, Pluto, the planet of power, it's the source of our power as a collective, changes into Aquarius. So that means the source of power for all of us to tap into lies in Aquarian themes. What are Aquarian themes, you might be asking? Aquarian themes are community, collaboration, and communication. You are not going to be working through this journal alone. No, 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 no. You and I are going to be working together to fill this out and to manifest our most amazing year ahead. And here's the challenge. I implore you to bring in people that you admire, people that you respect, people that you love, people that you care for, whether that's family, friends, your partners, your co-workers, your teammates. Bring them into this process. The more we share this resource, the more we are all tapping into the power that is available to us. It is no longer the solo Capricorn journey. Pluto's been there, done that since 2008. For the next 20 years, our power lies in community. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this together. We're going to share this with the people that we love, that we respect, that we want to see win. So again, go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. It is also, if you scroll up, the first link in the show notes. Download that PDF in less than a minute. And you and I are going to do this together. Don't miss this opportunity to create your most amazing year You're going to thank me later, I promise. So now that you got your journal, why don't we hop into this week? Happy Sunday, astro lovers, and welcome to another weekly forecast from your favorite astrologer. This is What's Up Astrology by yours truly, Graham Breitenstein, a.k.a. Drunk Astrology. I hope you guys have had an amazing week. I hope that you listened to... Last week's forecast that was only posted three days ago. I am now back in L.A. after have having been living and working in Maui, Hawaii for the last month. So thank you all for being patient as I was re- adjusting with a new schedule, with a time difference, all of that. I really appreciate you all. And thank you to everyone who has been patient enough to wait for their readings Um, We are back at it this week, so I will see a lot of you this week, those of you who are getting your 2021 Planet by the Planets reading, um, some of you with your uh, Cosmic Chemistry and Sinistry with your Relationships readings. We've got a lot. 
I've got a lot coming up, and there's a lot of conversations with uh, some new folks this week, and I'm really excited about it. So as a reminder, before we get started with this week's Cosmic Weather Report, you can book your 2021 Planet by the Planets reading for another two weeks until Friday, April 9th. And then after that, it goes away until we start prepping for 2022. So if you want to know your all your hot spots for love, for career, and for money, make sure you book your reading at drunkassshow.com ASAP um, because it will be going away. And I don't think I have any other news except for if you want to meet the newest member to Drunk Astrology's family, Make sure you come to Hump Day Hangover this Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific um, on either Instagram or Facebook Live. Um, I'm going to be introducing uh, the newest team member to the Drunk Astrology family. And I'm sure you're going to love him. He's a hard worker. He's a Capricorn. And he'll be truly, truly, you'll see. You'll see. You, you guys are gonna love him. I I totally love him, and you're you're gonna you're gonna love him. You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. Okay. Now it is. Let's just say this. Happy Easter week to those of you who celebrate Easter on Sunday, April fourth. We have the Easter holiday, and we've got some aspects on that day that will you know we'll we'll see we'll see how it, we'll see how it goes. Um, we have a really interesting week this week. Um, we have a planetary shift, so we get Mercury will be in Pisces for the greater part of the week, but he shifts into Aries this weekend, which means that we are then, for next week, we're going to have Sun, Mercury, and Venus all in Aries. And that is a lot of fiery energy. That is a lot of potentially aggressive, assertive, bold you know, a lot of people can like step out of line when this many planets are in Aries. So we're going to watch for that. And we're going to listen to we're going to listen to Mercury's Pisces story for 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 the next 5 days. We're going to listen to our intuition. We're going to listen to that little voice on the inside of our heads that's telling us something's not right or that or that it is right and you don't have a way to explain it. You don't necessarily have the facts. But you know that on the inside, it feels this way. Making a decision, whether you know whether it's a yes or no, will give will incite a feeling, and that's coming from your intuition. That's coming from Neptune. Neptune is the god of the sea. He's the planet that rules Pisces, and when Mercury's in Pisces, we get a lot of messages in, through our subconscious, through our dream state, because that's how Neptune communicates. Neptune communicates to us. Not necessarily with words, but with feelings and with, with you know, some sometimes cryptic messages. This is why Pisces in general can just be a little bit hard to to tag down because he, it's, a, it's a bit of a cryptic energy. It's a bit of like, wait a minute, it's wishy-washy. It's a mutable water sign. So the emotions come and go like the ocean tides. You know, like sometimes it's high tides, sometimes it's low tide. And you really, you know, you really have to just kind of ebb and flow with Pisces energy and especially when it's Mercury because Mercury is our it's our thinking mind it's how we communicate it's how we exchange information so right now we all might have a lot of feelings but we don't necessarily have the words to explain what the feelings are where they're coming from so if you find yourself getting feeling really contentious or you find that your relationships are stressed because this week we are under the Libra full moon that happened that perfected earlier this morning at 11:48 a.m. Pacific time. So our relationships, Libra being the sign of relationships, our relationships are having they're having a moment right now and that's the best parts of our relationships and the worst parts of our relationships. So if there's relationship issues coming up for you right now, Mercury and Pisces you know might not we might not be communicating effective, effectively with Mercury and Pisces right now, but the Sun and Venus both riding together in lockstep in Aries, you know, th- there might be words, there might be, you know, some fiery words spoken um, because the, the full moon is highlighting the, the issues. 
and then the Aries planets are ready to fight, but Mercury and Pisces can't exactly explain itself. And then Mars and Gemini is looking at the options, going, okay, wait. Well, maybe it's this. Well, maybe it's that. It's a really heady, you know, Mars is really cerebral when he's in Gemini because it's the planet that that Mercury rules. So when you got Mars answering to Mercury and Pisces, it's it's a whole lot of getting lost in your head and weighing, you know, going back and forth and wait, this way, that way, is it this or is it that? Did I talk to them? No, but I'm feeling this way, but should I be feeling this way? And then the Aries planets are just have had enough of the back and forth and are ready to fight. So that's just to just kind of prep you for, or just, you know, maybe ease your mind if that's kind of how you're feeling in some of your relationships. Now, at the same time, if you're in great relationships, great supportive relationships, then, and this doesn't have to just be, mean romance, okay? This is, this is your relationships to siblings, to family, to friends, to coworkers, these are just all of our relationships getting a nice lunar moonbeam shown onto them to say like, hey, like look how awesome this relationship is and celebrate those relationships that deserve celebration. And then work on work on the ones that are are having some not so pretty things come to the forefront. Um, it, this, is a, this is a great opportunity to address any issues that have been long-standing but not discussed or if it's an unresolved issue that's maybe come up before in the past but there's still some remnants that need to be cleaned up. Use the next two weeks under the Libra full moon to clarify, to communicate, to compromise in order to harmonize within your relationship. And that is the overall vibe. I just, just kind of wanted to give you a prep on that before we got to the moons. So if you are someone who follows the moon phases, this is a time to grab your pen and get your moon calendar. And if you're not someone who yet follows the moon phases, I highly encourage you to do so because the moon is the fastest moving celestial body in the sky, changes signs every two and a half days. And the moon really sets the tone for... Our daily, the daily vibe that we feel. And the last aspect the moon makes is called void, of course. But it's the last aspect it make, makes um, to a planet before it switches into a new sign. And when the moon goes void, whatever that aspect is, it kind of sets the tone for the two and a half days prior to it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I want to get in your ear real quick. There are a lot of spiritual viewpoints and perspectives that you can subscribe to. You know, there's astrology, numerology, feng shui, there's Akashic records, there's past life regressions, there's destiny cards. There is just any number of ways that you can tap into the universe to get insight, to help you create the life you want to live, to create abundance and prosperity love and relationships, connection, all those things. And I recognize that there is a lot and that at times it can be overwhelming and it can be hard to figure out who to go to, who can I listen to, who can I trust. So this is why I created the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series. If you're not already listening to it, it's available wherever you're listening to this podcast already, but you can also watch each interview on drunkastro.com. There's a whole page there for it. And I've linked the series in the show notes. So in this series, one, I want you to I want you to know all the different tools that you can use to manifest big this year. Because the life that you want, the life that you deserve, it is waiting for you. And there are a number of methods to consider, spiritual and non-spiritual. Okay, I'm in this series, I'm not only talking to Tali from the Astro Twins, not only talking to Christina Hollinger, a feng shui expert, about how to feng shui your living space, your workspace, to create a space that is high vibration and that attracts the life you want to live. I'm not only talking to a crystal expert about what crystals are good for the energy of 2024's unique energy. 
not only talking to a symbologist, a destiny card reader. Have you ever heard of that? Because I hadn't heard of that until I met um, CJ, who is the destiny card reader I bring into this um, series. Um, I'm not only talking to spiritual folks. I'm talking to an intimacy expert because love and relationships are at the top of a lot of our list, single or not single. We can all learn how to be more intimate with each other, be more authentically expressing ourselves. I'm also talking to Elise Joan, a Beachbody super trainer and longevity expert, because it's not about just creating an amazing life. It's about living a long life, one that you love, one that you want to be healthy for, one that you want to actually stay in for the long haul. So this series is set up to to get you in alignment from all different angles. So if you haven't already, go catch up on the episodes that have already aired. And the new episodes that are coming, every single Wednesday, a new episode will drop until the series is finished. So go back, drunkastro.com. There's a whole page for how to manifest big in 2024. All the videos are there. Watch the interviews. There's a link to this in the show notes. It'll get you right where you need to be. Okay? We're doing this this year. You're doing this this year. Your your, um, Manifest Big in 2024 journal, that is the foundation of what you're going to use this year to set goals that you're actually going to achieve. Now, all these other tools in the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, these are all going to enhance your vibe, enhance the vibe of your living space, your heart set, your mindset, your body set. You are going to be, there's no way by using the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, by tapping into the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, this is all you need. It's all you need, okay? So in case you haven't got into it, this was just a little reminder. needed to get that in your ear. Let's get back to this episode and keep up this vibration. And when you hear me say that the moon is void, just keep in mind that when the moon is void, and sometimes the phase is only a minute and sometimes it's all day. But when the moon is void, it's not. It's a time to work on existing projects. Don't start anything new. Don't initiate anything new. Don't buy things online. Don't buy a whole bunch of groceries because typically you, things go bad and there's stress related to new things that are initiated under a void moon. So that being said, let's talk about the moons for the week of March 29th through April 4th, 2021. Here we go. So as of right now, as you know, the moon is in Libra. We had the full moon at 11.48 a.m. this morning. And the moon is in Libra Monday the 29th up until 5.08 p.m. when it goes void, of course, with a square to Pluto. So a Libra moon square to Pluto. Don't be surprised if this weekend, if if you had some some arguments within relationships, the closing aspect of a square to Pluto, that's that's stressful, that's argumentative, it's separative. Um, but it's, it's an aspect that requires action to get to the other side of. So action to resolution. So both parties have to come together and agree that they don't want to stay in this moment. They don't want to stay in this, the way this feels, the way the argument feels. Both parties have to come into a position of agreement in order to compromise and to conflict resolution. The moon is void from 5.08 p.m. until 10.33 p.m. Pacific. All the times I give you will be Pacific Standard Time, so make sure you adjust to your time zone. And at 10.33 p.m., the moon enters Scorpio. It'll be in Scorpio Tuesday the 30th and Wednesday the 31st, going void at 5.29 p.m. with a sextile to Pluto. So now that is a lovely closing aspect. Um, Very productive Scorpio moon working with Pluto, its ruling sign. So that's that's fantastic. The moon is void from 529 p.m. on Wednesday until 1059 p.m. when it enters Sagittarius. The moon's going to be in Sagittarius late Wednesday night, all day Thursday, 
and which is April Fool's Day. And then Friday, April 2nd, going void at 1024 p.m. with a square to Mercury. Now, the one thing I will say, if you're somebody who does the whole April Fool's thing and, and you do pranks and all of that jazz, watch out for this year. <laughs> Sagittarius is known for their one-line zingers. They're known, you know, if, if anyone can do a good prank, it's Sagittarius. So one, if you're someone who gets pranked a lot, watch out for your April Fool's Day. But with the Sag Moon going boy with a square to Mercury, you want to watch out for potential potential words that, that cut. And, uh, you know, some... Some anger, <laughs> some some angry responses to pranks. So make sure you watch that. Watch out for that. Uh, the moon is void all Friday night from 1024 p.m. until Saturday morning early uh, when it enters Capricorn on April 3rd at 1.13 a.m. The moon will be in Capricorn all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and Friday going void at 12.05 a.m., early, early, early in the morning, late at night, um, with a conjunction to Pluto. So Capricorn moon, conjunct Pluto. Conjunctions can either go can go either way. They can be really, really good, or they can be really, really bad. Capricorn is the traditional sign of the you know of tradition. So for those of those of you who celebrate Easter, you can, you know, you can expect a nice traditional celebration. Now, there is also on Sunday a quarter moon at 3.02 a.m. So the quarter moon is the midpoint between today's Libra full moon and then next week's Aries new moon. So with quarter moons, we, we look back to the, to the Libra full moon and go, okay, what did we release? What, what needed to go? What arguments? What things came to light? in my relationships and now the capricorn quarter moon says okay and like what's what's gonna work what's the what's the next strategy um let's get a plan together let's get earthy let's get grounded let's let's come back down and say hey you know that our you know whether it's a romantic relationship whether it's you know with your siblings or just say like okay we're family we're lovers we love each other now Let's let's agree that the old way of doing things is no longer working, and now let's devise a plan that will work. So the quarter moon kind of cuts through the nonsense, and the Capricorn energy of it all is going to say, like, all right, let's just find something that works for both of us. Okay, and then I don't think there's any other moon. Oh well, let's just talk about let's just talk about the, the overall feeling of the week. From the moon's perspective, the moon makes a lot of adjusting aspects this week. There are some harmony and balancing, you know, nice flowy aspects woven in. But for the most part, there is a whole lot of adjustment this week. Monday, for example, there's two quincunxes, which are which are the adjusting aspects. They're 150 degree angles, um, but those quincunxes. Um, on Monday, and then Tuesday is a day to watch out for. The moon makes one, two, three quincunxes, an opposition, and a square. So Tuesday is a very contentious day. With that, though, because the Scorpio moon on Tuesday has all those adjusting and, and harsher aspects, enlightening aspects, I'll say that as well, the closing aspect to that moon is a sextile to Pluto, which is very, very productive. So even though Tuesday is likely to be stressful, just know that there's a there's a productive component to it. The stress is productive, and it has a positive end result. So keep that in mind. Um, again, on Wednesday even, there's, there's a quincunx and a square. On Thursday, there's Thursday's actually a really nice day, and we're going to get to the planetary aspects here in a second, but Thursday's a really nice day. There's one adjusting aspect at 1.54 p.m. to Uranus, so it might just be something, you know, like, oh my gosh, I have to adjust to this. I didn't see it coming. Um, but everything else, there's three trines and a sextile on Thursday, so Thursday's a really, really nice day. Um, not without its Sagittarius humor 
and one-line zingers for April Fool's, but overall, a really nice day. Friday, Friday's kind of one of those, like, iffy days, because you've got the opposition, you've got one opposition, a square, a sextile, and then the square to Mercury when it goes void. And the weekend overall is is pretty nice, not without some adjusting aspects or some squares. But overall, it's 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 a weekend where you can get a lot a lot of work done too if you're someone who works throughout the weekends like me. And beyond that, just a nice traditional, you know, like what what's your version of of tradition? And because you get to really define that this weekend under the Capricorn moon. You know, whether whether it's Easter for you or not. It's kind of if you want to start your own tradition for your own life and your own family within your own relationships, this coming weekend's a great a great time to do it. Now, as far as the planets go, again, Sun and Venus riding side by side together in Aries. Monday the 29th, the Sun has a conjunction to Chiron, which is our wounded healer. So, um that can be a bit of an emotional day. It can it can feel it can feel like okay, now this is this is an annual aspect. The sun only meets Chiron once a year. And this is kind of like saying let's let's look at the wound and let's see how we can how we can work with it. You know, what are our trigger points? What are our traumas? And this is this is a way to just kind of say like, "Hey, I'm going to work I like to personify. I I got my degree in English literature." Um, I like to personify it and say, okay, I know that we've been working together for X amount of years, but now let's start a let's start a new plan. Let's, you know, I'm feeling this way, but I wanna I don't wanna feel like this forever. And this is how I'm gonna put an action plan. It's in, you know, Sun and Chiron are, are in Aries and they're coming to meet. So, you know, they want an action plan. They want they wanna they wanna know exactly what they're gonna do, how they're gonna how they're going to attack their 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 story together. Also on Monday we have Mercury and Neptune coming to join each other in Pisces. So this is a real dreamy, wishy-washy, watery day. So with the Sun Chiron conjunction and Mercury Neptune's conjunction on Monday, you might find that you know, you might find that the emotions are running high. You might find that you're just kind of like, okay, wait. I'm really emotional right now, and I might need to, maybe I need to take a sabbatical. Maybe, maybe I need to, maybe I need to, maybe I need to rest. Maybe I need to nap. Maybe I need to just give myself a little bit of, you know, some, some alone time. Um, and, and can also watch out for the, for the substance abuse there. Uh, it, it, Mercury, Pisces, Neptune, Pisces, that's, that's a lot of, um, coaxing you know or just kind of um soothing one's one's uh one's mindset with with substance so make sure you don't overdo that but it's also uh it's also a an agreement an internal agreement within yourself with with your dream with your plan to make your dreams a reality neptune is all about you know the dream and your vision so this is a great time too if you're if you're feeling a little bit of you know the the Sun Chiron emotion, and Mercury Neptune emotion as well, you know what what's your what what are your creative outlets? You know, play some play your favorite music, you know, dance, write some poetry, um, sit underneath a tree. You know, it's springtime here in the Northern Hemisphere. You know, sit under a tree and you know just daydream. You know, what are your fantasies? How, how, how do you plan on or do you plan on making your fantasies a reality ever? It's a, it's a great time to kind of get lost. You know, get lost. Go with the ebb and flow, high tide, low tide vibe. On Tuesday, we've got now, and, and this is going to happen with both the sun and Venus, but Tuesday, Venus comes to sex house Saturn at 847 a.m. So, oh. I didn't tell you the times. The Sun Chiron conjunction happens at 109 a.m. on Monday, and the Mercury Neptune conjunction happens at 824 p.m. on Monday. So Tuesday, Venus Saturn sextile at 847 a.m., but on Wednesday, there's the Sun Saturn sextile at 204 p.m. Because they're they're gonna be making the same aspects because they're riding side by side. 
So Venus and Sun working productively with Saturn. These are days to get your plan together. It's, about, it's time to get real about what you're trying to accomplish. Now, you know, short-term and long-term plans. So it's great for those of you who are having your 2021 readings this week. This is a great week for it. Very productive. Because now it's saying like, all right, this is my action plan. This is, you know, now that I know what, what 2021 looks like for me, I know my hot spots. Now I'm going to make the appropriate plans to, to, to make it happen. So that's Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, Thursday, Thursday is the nicest day. So if you want to triple star Thursday for yourself, I absolutely encourage you to do so. The moon makes all those wonderful aspects, but then Mercury has a sextile to Pluto at 11.04 p.m. And that is just another, it's another, it's like an internal contract with yourself to say, all right, this is my, this is my work strategy. This is my, my, my plan of action with, with, um, with the powers that be, with authority figures. Um, this is how I plan to work within power dynamics. This is how I plan to work. This is how I just plan to, to work with those people that, that I know are conducive to what I'm trying to do into what I'm trying to build. And Mercury's going to be in a creative space while Pluto's in Capricorn ready to, ready to change and evolve and, and, and work hard. And now, let's see. As far as this weekend goes, again, on Saturday the 3rd, Mercury enters Aries at 8.41 p.m., so adding to the gamut of Aries planets. So that makes three out of our five personal planets all in Aries. So the moon, of course, will be changing, you know, back and forth. But Mars and Gemini is going to kind of, he can be a gaslight. So we got to watch while these three planets are all in Aries together. The Mars and Gemini, you know, is, is, can have a lot to say. It's a really cerebral, um, but really communicative too. And really just kind of like in its head a lot. So just watch for the watch for the watch for the gaslighting. And then we talked about the quarter moon and and that's it. I hope that okay, oops. Sorry, you know, your astrologer over here is of course always doing multiple things. So not multiple things, but <laughs> I'm looking at all the things on, on and written in my schedule and all the aspects and, and everything. And, of course, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> There's always something going on with your, your five-time Virgo over here. Sun, moon, Mercury, Mars, and rising all in Virgo for those of you who, who are new to, the, new to the clan. So, again, before we sign off, I'll just remind you, if you want to get that 2021 Planet by the Planets reading, go to drunkastro.com backslash readings, or just click on the readings tab, and you can schedule there. My, my schedule is, uh, my availability is already preloaded into the, into the site, so, you know, book a time that works for you. And I'll see you Wednesday to introduce you to Drunk Astrology's newest team member. And other than that, I don't think there's any news. Um, there will be things uh, announced coming soon. So if you're not on the newsletter, make sure you go to drunkassshow.com and sign up for the newsletter. You'll either get a, you'll see a pop up, or you can scroll down to the bottom of any page, and uh, there's a little gift for those of you who already aren't um, subscribed to the newsletter. And other than that, that's it. I hope you have a wonderful week. A very productive week, a very adjusting. I hope you, you know, if if you're not a mutable person like me. Hey, one last thing before we go. Who are three people you could share this episode with? Who would benefit from learning astrology in real time? From learning how to work with the energy of the cosmos, from tracking the patterns and cycles, to seeing it in real time, in motion. Can you text them right now? Can you send that message and just say, I'm going to share this show with you because I think that you would really vibe with learning in this way. I would appreciate it. They would appreciate it. And you'll feel good knowing that you're spreading the love. Let's keep that high vibration going. I'll see you next week. Bye.